Pastor Lawrence and leadership for inviting me. Praise God, it's been a long time. My elder aunt says, there's a time and a season for everything. Wise men. <laughs> okay. Well, you have heard uh, spiritual growth and revival. I believe it's a very important topic. In fact, it is so important that we should make this as a mission and vision for our life. Right? Our Christian life should never be stagnant or just maintained. We should always grow from glory to glory, from strength to strength. In other words, our spiritual growth and revival is not something like Duran Ruto or something like we say, Que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be, the future not I to see. We Sarah, Sarah. Have you heard that song before? Those 60 and above heard that song. I just wanted to identify. Okay. Now, growth is something that is very important. And one of the saddest things in, in life is when you stop growing. Correct? whether emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, or in every area of our lives. For example, when a toddler in the hands of the father is sucking milk, and oh, it's so beautiful, it's so cute, right? Now the toddler is 15 years old, still in the arms of the father and still sucking blood. I'm sucking blood. <laughs> Sorry, it must be lack of sleep. Still sucking the milk bottle, you know something is wrong. Am I right? Somewhere the growth mentally or emotionally is short-circuited. Now, let's say that's true also spiritually for some Christian. I've been born again in the year 1980, 44 years ago, all right? And half of you, quarter of you are not born yet. And I've been in a full time for 37 years, it's a long time, and I started preaching some 40 over years ago. I've seen the best of church and Christian, the worst of church and Christian. I've seen all kinds of situations and people. There are Christians who started very well, started with great fire, great zeal, great growth, and they sit in front. 30 years later, they sit at the back. I wonder why. They were excited to serve God. They were excited to open the door and greet you. Now they just lay at the back. Queen Sarah, Sarah. That fire, that motivation is no more. Why? Let me ask you a question. Is Jesus the center of the life or is it a spare tire? That's mouthful. Only you answer yourself. What do I mean Jesus is the center of your life, your steering wheel, or is it just a spare time? Now, I pastored for five years. Elder Aunt asked me, I think, whether I passed. Somebody asked me whether I pastored. Oh, the lawyer quit. Okay. Good memory for names. So you tell me once, I'll remember you. I pastor for five years and I like prayer meeting. How many of you like prayer meeting? How many of you attend prayer meeting? Don't pull up your hand. Because it will shame those who did not. That's not my intention here tonight. I like prayer meeting. I believe prayer meeting, corporate church prayer meeting is probably the most important meeting. And of course the Sunday service too. And I would usually go about half an hour to one hour earlier to get prayed up before I lead and share the word and we have a prayer meeting. So while I was pastoring, and I know uh, church statistics says that if you have 10% of the church membership attends prayer meeting is good. 
That means out of 100, you have 10 who attend prayer meeting is good. I thought that's bad. That is backslided. <laughs> you should have 100% attendance, but in reality, it's not, right? On the contrary, when you have a Christmas luncheon, throw in with uh, food and, and lucky draw, you have 100 members, suddenly 200 people come. Very, very strange. Try calling for fasting and prayer. Okay, anyway, so I was sitting in a church all alone waiting for the prayer meeting to start and this gentleman walked in and he was early too. I've never seen him come to prayer meeting. I only see him on Sunday. Do you have Sunday Christian only? No, sorry, you came to the camp so you are not because those Sunday Christian would not come for camp because it's additional money, time, effort, all right? I congratulate you. I wouldn't want to speak to five. So, okay, anyway. I said, welcome to the prayer meeting. I said, what brought you? You are early. He said, oh, pastor, I just went to the doctor. They suspect I could have stomach cancer. Oh, okay, that's good. That's so good. Medically, no cure, right? So you come to see Jesus. Very good. So every Wednesday prayer meeting, he would come. And he will come, he will come early. A month later, he disappeared. So he never come straight, just come for one month. So one morning, Sunday morning, I was shaking his hand at the door, Sunday morning. I'm also an usher, very versatile pastor, usher. And my son's name is Asher, but I was an usher. I said, hi, hey, what happened? I don't see a prayer meeting anymore. They say, yeah, yeah, the last medical check, they found there was no cancer in my stomach. I felt like... <laughs> I felt like punching him. Then I, I remember, oh, I'm a pastor. Okay, go, go. Don't treat God as a spare tire. When there's crisis, emergency, you go bankrupt, something happened to your child, something drastic, then you come seeking God. I think that is not very nice. God should not be used. God should be loved, worshipped, honoured, and served. If you want to have Christian growth and have revival, you must have a consistent life and seek God and draw near to God. Come and read the book of James 4. Verse 8. Do you have Bible software? All right. I know you're a brilliant guy. See, so fast. I like you. What's your name? <laughs> Timothy. Can I take him to Rawan? <laughs> what do you do, sir? What do you do? Your accountant. Huh? Finance analyst. Sounds good. My son will be interested to get to know you. He likes finance. Okay. Come near to God. Do you have New King James Version? Okay, now my the next one you use King James. Come near. <laughs> Shama, do you see that? You better learn, huh? And let's all read together, shall we? Let's have fun. Alright? I'm, I'm, I'm a very interesting preacher, inspirational, so it's not boring, okay? Nobody sleeps in my class. I was a lecturer before. You want to try? I got cups here with water. Okay. Say so, one, two, three. Draw yeah. to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you. You say what has that got to do? It sounds very contrasting with the small words. Part they say, draw near to God, and I will draw near to you. How many of you feel God is far away? Can I see your hand? Wow, that's fantastic. Pastor Lawrence, let's pack and go home. <laughs> the camp mission is accomplished. They're all walking with God. They are close to God. They all are growing spiritually. Why do you invite me? Someone said, I feel God so far away. Who moved? 
if you have a relationship with a person, you will know whether you're close to the person or not by the response of the other person. Am I right? How many of you got friends? Oh, only three fellas in this church have friends. You have friends, right? The rest are enemies. How many of you got friends? Now, I ask a question not to put you down or belittle them. I have a purpose because when you respond, I know you are following me. How many of you have friends? Because I want to illustrate something. How many of you have good friends and suddenly that friend turns cold? So do you know what I mean? Our relationship with God can be that way too. We can have once upon a time a good relationship with God and suddenly we turn cold. But I got good news for those prodigal sons who left the house. The Father is waiting to bring you home. Amen. So, I want to encourage you, if you want to have spiritual growth in your life, you must draw near to God. And seek God. Why is it seeking God so important? Because it will help you to grow and know God better and know the altar of God's word. And as you grow in God, you move from level to level in your life. And you are given spiritual authority, spiritual responsibility. You are given rewards and blessings and you encounter things and experience things that you've probably never experienced, right? For example, what you learned in primary six, you cannot learn in university. Some things you can only learn in university, you cannot learn in primary six. Same in our Christian life. As I said, I've been born again for 44 years. The more I walk with God, I realize He is awesome, amazing, Fearful. What I mean fearful is you fear God. You love God and you fear God. It's a, it's a very oxymoron term. Okay, that's a big word. It's a very strange because you love God and yet you fear. How many of you have father and mother that you love and yet you fear? That you, in case you do something wrong. <laughs> My mother... My parents have 10 children. I'm the youngest of 10. My mother is a matriarch. You know matriarch? Well, uh, she's like Margaret Thatcher. How many of you remember Margaret Thatcher? The Iron Fist. Sorry, I'm talking about... You know, how young are you, sir? <laughs> You're five series. Okay, you studied history, right? Margaret Thatcher is known as the Iron Fist Lady. She ruled, okay. My mother was quite similar. I love her. At the same time, I'm fearful of her because if you do something wrong, my backside will not sit for one month. No, she's not an abuser. But she knows what discipline is. And I think our relationship with God should be one of loving and fear that we will not sin, we will not do something wrong, that, that He is not approved and He is not pleased. Okay, that's very deep. You see, one of the greatest blessings in my Christian life is to realize that God is pleased with me. Not only God loves me, but God is pleased. That means what I do, what I preach, my life I live, is pleasing to Him. I don't know whether you understand. I know all God loves us. How many know God loves you? Only six. Oh, this is serious, bro. From one extreme of very walking close to God, the other extreme you do not know. How many know God loves you? Are you sure? Are you really, really sure in the security of God's love? And then you're on the right foundation. So my mother was, I love her, yet I fear her. Fear her not because 
uh, of punishment. Fear her so that I would not displease her. You understand? That is the same when you walk with God. Come with me to the book of Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 13. The background of Jeremiah 29 is the children of Israel under the captivity in Babylon. They were taken out of their own country. They were in a desolate country, poor, persecuted, and have the very minimum. And Jeremiah the prophet prophesied this amazing prophecy. For I know the plans I have, or thoughts that, another version says, the plans that I have towards you, says the Lord. Plans or thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Sometimes crisis is good because crisis lead people to where Jesus Christ is. They say when the stock market, when the share market is down, the gospel market is up. How many of you came to Christ because of some crisis, some problems, some issue in life? Can I see your hand? Okay, I'm sure I'm one of them, all right? Because of a problem in my life, I kept seeking for answer. All right, now the phrase I want is, See, the children of Israel were in a very bad situation. They were under captivity. But God promised them that God has a good future, good plan for your life. How do you believe God has a good plan, good future for your life, your children, your family? That's correct. But God also promised something that is so powerful. When you seek Him with all your heart, you will find I want to encourage you, if you truly want to grow spiritually, you want to experience revival, you want to experience miracles, healing, supernatural provision of finance, divine encounter, favor, promotion, blessing, overflow, welcome to seeking God as your vision, and mission in life. I'm telling you, 44 years of my experience walking with God, you experience favor, miracles, supernatural provision, amazing things. As I look back, I just think how good God is. All right? I have a spiritual son. His name is Raymond, and he's a fantastic piano teacher and worship leader. He always asked me, he said, Paul, what, Pastor Paul, what do you do right that it seems like, like your life is so blessed, you, you walk in a different level like most people and God is with you and you know, the ministry, your walk, your family, the blessings of God upon your life. It is so amazing. What, what is the secret? I thought about it and I want to share with you the little secret that I have. It's found in Hebrews 11, verse 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Now, without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that He is, and He is the rewarder of them that seek him. He is a rewarder of them that seek Him. Alright? Part of the reward of seeking God is your growth spiritually. It's your encountering God. It's experiencing His miracle, His breakthrough, His provision, His blessing that is far beyond what you can ever ask or think. Okay? Now, I was a lecturer. I was born again in 1980 and I went to New Malaya the following year. And I graduated. I was lecturing ITM, Institute of Technology Mara. It was not UITM then. 
And then God, I heard the voice of God spoke to me to go to full-time ministry. So I resigned as a job and I went to Australia with the little savings that I had. And I spent one year at Bible school in Australia, Brisbane. And I came back home with less than 300 ringgit in my bank. I don't have EPF. I, I don't have any money. I don't even own a bicycle. I didn't want to go back to my parents' home to stay because both my parents were then non-Christian. They could not understand. I'm the youngest in my family, the only one who made it to university. They were so proud of me. They used to grab me. My first disappointment, I became a Christian. My second disappointment, I became a full-time worker or a pastor. My father scolded me. He says, I educated you for so long and you want to be a pastor. And then the, the straw that broke the camel back is when I married an Indian. So you can imagine my life is so, my walk is so, so this thing that, so I didn't want to go back to my parents and I, the time I was single, I had not married yet. And with that, with the call of God, all I had was a bag with books and clothing. That's how I started my life, my walk, my ministry. 37 years later, I'm married with my wife at the back. She's 34 years. I have a son who is 26 years. <laughs> my wife traveled with me for 34 years around the world. My son, 17 years. At 17, he'd been to 17 countries. By the grace of God, I've been to 60 countries. Now think for a moment that our ticket of three of us, we are church based in SIB, we are not paid salary, we don't have a church support, we don't, we don't have any financial support, we are not related to Rosma and Najib. <laughs> At 17 years old, my son studied in America, two degree, he did two degrees. He's now working as a lawyer for a law firm. Something that is far beyond my imagination, my asking. I was talking to lawyer Kui. <laughs> He's a lawyer. And I always wanted to be a lawyer. And I could not. But God, by His grace, let my son to be a lawyer. How could a pastor got no business, got no church, got no salary, no saving, could send the son six years in America to study. He must have stolen a lot of money. Maybe he is... No. He is a seeker of God. That's all I can tell you. I'm a very ordinary person. I can tell you tonight many stories of God's intervention. God's grace, God's mercy, because we choose to seek God. Okay, how do you seek God? Something must be intentional. It must be intentional. You must make a quality decision to walk with God, to seek God, and no matter what happens, will not compromise. Did you hear what I say? Alright? I use the word compromise because I've seen too many pastors, too many Christians compromise. They started very well. Unfortunately, they did not finish well. That's my constant prayer too, that I start well and I like to finish well by His grace and by His strength. I do not know how many of you every day you carve out time to seek God, read the Word. In those days, we call it quiet time. Can I just borrow your handphone? This is the greatest blessing or the greatest curse in our modern technology. It all depends on your hand. A thousand ringgit in your hand can be a greatest blessing or a greatest curse. A thousand ringgit can go and feed the poor 
instant slum area. The same 1,000 ringgit you can employ an assassin to kill somebody. Sorry, I shouldn't teach you all this. It's from the underworld. <laughs> but you know it's true, right? Now this phone is amazing. With this phone, you can go around the world, answer your email, buy air ticket, call Grab, pay whatever bills. But this phone can also got YouTube, WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, Water, what, TikTok, what, talk, TikTok, all kinds of wonderful, funny. I still remember so clearly. One lady came up to me this a few years ago. Pastor, do you have Facebook? I was scratching my head. What is Facebook? I said, yes, I have face, I have book, but what is Facebook? I was technologically very ignorant. Now, by the way, I have, I have, I have gadgets. You saw, right? I brought one. During our early days, the television was the idiot box. I think this is a devil's tool. No. It all depends on the person who uses it. Why I use this is illustration is because many people sleep with handphone, wake up with handphone, go to the toilet with handphone, eat with handphone, <coughs> drive with handphone, WhatsApp with handphone, WhatsApp during driving with handphone. Do you know two seconds of off attention can kill you, get an accident. Just two seconds. So tempted when somebody called you. <laughs> Especially if you're in love. <laughs> no, none of you in the 60s are addicted to handphone, right? You must be 60 and above. <laughs> okay, come back to the story. You must cough up every day to seek God. Because what you love, whom you love, you always have time. I always very true to see young lovers now. They can talk for four hours over the phone. Four hours non-stop. What to talk, huh? Four minutes finish right with your wife? Sorry, I, we have married for 34 years, so four minutes finished. Because all our stories finished already. But have you seen young, young lovers, they just get to know each other, hang on the phone for four hours, I'll scratch my head, four hours. How many can talk to God for four hours? Four minutes. Four minutes, you know, four long one. Karabo, you pray, you seek God, I'm going to seek God tomorrow. Huh? Two hours I'm going to lock myself in the room. Karabo, soko, ya raba, santa raba, hallelujah, worship you, Jesus, you are a good God, raba, raba, shuko. It sounds so long, I thought two hours, long. it's only two minutes. Why is it seeking God, praying, relationship with God is so boring? But talking to your girlfriend is so exciting. Talking to, uh, about football, about Whatever you love is so exciting, but when it comes to God, that shows how much we love God. Daniel 6 verse 10. Daniel 6 verse 10. Now, what I'm sharing is nothing new under the sun. See, so how do I know? Because Solomon in Acts says, says there's nothing new under the sun. My purpose coming here is not to impress you. My purpose coming here is not to tell you anything new. My purpose coming here is to, if you could hear what my heart and what the Spirit of God inspire me to share. And you leave this camp not just a hearer, but a doer. Because there are too many hearers of God's word, their lives will not change. It's only the doers. I told you I pastored five years. And in these five years, I have a leadership that who are Christian for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. But their life never changed. 
their character never change, their bad habits never change. Sad, isn't it? That means they never grow, they never progress. They act spiritual, they seem spiritual, they attend all the services by virtue of their leaders, but their life never changed. Okay, never mind. It doesn't concern P and C, right? P, Panarmaran? That means Indian and Malay cannot come. How come you're here? It's only for Chinese. You're half Chinese. You're like me, half Indian. So strange, huh? Why only Chinese? Ah? Anyway, can you change the Pandaran Methodist Church? <laughs> no. Okay. Ah, wise man. Pandaraman Christian. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Now this this <laughs> So Daniel 6 verse 10. Let me give you the background before you look at the scripture. He was serving a king, a very strange, he was in Babylon, and the king just had a law through the conspiracy of all the jealous counsellors, the peers of Daniel. Daniel was one head above. He was exalted, promoted by God. He had a spirit of excellence and he was like the leader. And they all were jealous of the favour that Daniel had with the king and his position. So they looked for his downfall. Say downfall. In politics, they always look for your downfall, your weakness. They were surprised. He got no desire for woman. Because he's a eunuch. Hallelujah. Some of us need to be eunuch. I mean, sorry, too late. <laughs> Number two, he got no problem with money. Number three, he got no problem with pride. Three deadly sinned. Number four, the only cash that he has was he worshiped God and he prayed three times a day. Do you know how busy prime minister are? Do you know how busy? He runs the whole nation. By the way, the king is only authority figure. But who runs the executive? Daniel. It says when Daniel knew the writing was signed, which means if he, he did not obey, he will be thrown in the lion's den. He went home and in his upper room with his window open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks to God as he was custom since early days. I would like you to underline as his custom since early days. Can you repeat? One, two, three. As his custom Why did I emphasize that? Because I want to share with you one word called consistency. Which I think is so much lacking in the Christian churches today in terms of their devotion, their walk, their prayer, their word life. Consistency is so important. Daniel has been blessed, exalted, promoted, used powerfully by God Almighty. Yet angels appeared to him. God showed him the vision of the end times. Why? What's so special? Why, why, why Daniel? And I think the key here lies with his heart towards God by his prayer life and by his consistency. He, at this point of time, he's quite an elderly man. He laid a foundation in his young man that he will not compromise no matter what. He will not touch the king's meat and the alcohol drink when he was a young man taken from captive to Babylon to serve. He was brilliant. He was straight A's. He passed all the tests, but he will not compromise when it comes to food, kosher, his God. He will not compromise to the extent of throne in the lion's den. Wow! Where are the Daniel, young Daniels in our generation today? We want revival. How can revival start when we don't even have the basic? Our prayer meeting. The shore up will tell us that whether we are ready for revival. A lot of churches today, big churches, are so conscious of time. One and a half hours, one hour, 40 minutes preaching. Pa, 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 pa. We pray for revival. Really? What if God comes at 10 30 and your service finishes at 10? 
How many understand what I'm saying? We want revival, but we don't have time for God. We want growth, but we are not putting effort. Anybody here carry weights? Go to gym? Nobody. Who? I'm sure Pandamaran and Clan got gym club, right? Uh, May I suggest those who are 50 and above start taking up gym? Hey, this is not laughing matter. I'm a health person. If you want to live long, live well, walk well, and not sing it here, sing it there, here pain, that pain, you have, must have constant exercise, you must go to the gym, carry some weight, not heavy weight, but carry weight enough to sustain your muscle because. If you don't, your muscle will degenerate. You don't use your leg, you lie in the bed for three weeks, after that you cannot walk. Don't use it, lose it. So now I come back to Daniel. He did not compromise. He was consistent with his walk, no matter what happened. In other words, earlier in his life, he already made a quality decision that you will follow Jesus, you will follow the ways of God no matter how. When I was born, I didn't know I was a very sicky child. And of course I knew. The first 12 years of my existence was doctors, sensei, Chinese, you know, talisman. How many know the talisman? Burn, drink, stay in a temple. My parents were idol worshippers. They were fanatical, extreme idol worshippers. We have idols, Papi Kong Kwan Lima, from front, back, center, everywhere. Every 15 and 20, 30, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 first and 15, you know the Chinese? My house would have those temple kind of joystick, not the small type, you know, the little one, this is a big one, you know, the big one. The number of demons in my house... Okay, anyway, joke that aside. So I got born again in 1980. I was 19. And I went to university the following year. So when I turned 21, before I turned 21, my mom came to me. My mom says, I want you to come back this weekend. I said, why? You see, I was staying in PJ, I was studying in University of Malaya, my house is in Klang. Some weekends I come, some weekends I don't because I only have a motorbike. It's about 45 minutes drive in a motorbike. It's dangerous, it's raining, it's hot. Anyway, so that particular week before that, my mom told me, you must come back. I said, why? Because then the story came out. Say, when you were born, you were very sickly, we do not know whether you have made it, so we dedicated you to Tua Pei Kong. So you become a child of Tua Pei Gong. And my parents make a vow that if I live until 21, they would have a celebration and give thanks to Tua Pei Gong for protecting me. You understand? The devil is a liar. The devil is an imitator. So I look at my mom so stunned because first time I'm hearing the story, I say, Mom, I would come back. Now, that's where the fear of my mother <laughs> The love of my mother and the obedience of the word of God comes in. Now, the two is already very difficult, right? You love him, you fear him, and now I'm a Christian. And all what I'm going to do is going to contradict everything she believes, all right? So I said, Mom, I love you, but even if I come back, I will not take the jaw still because I'm already a Christian. I cannot. My mom, as I said, is a Margaret Thatcher, a light Margaret Thatcher. She insists that I come back. And when I don't, she says, look, if you don't come back, we will not support your university education anymore. So I had an exchange of words with her. They said, the apple doesn't fall too far away from the tree. Very deep. I'm sure a lawyer Craig can explain to you. <laughs> you produce after your kind. Okay. My mom is stubborn. I'm more stubborn. <laughs> I mean, stubborn in the right sense would not give in. You know? 
So, I was very hurt. I was threatened. I do, I'm not sure whether my mom was meant it or not. I, I think she meant it. She, for her, that's a very serious time because she made a vow to Bombay Kong, you know? And if I don't fulfill the vow, and in order to coerce me or force me, she threatened to cut off the financial support for me to study in University of Malaya. Now, by the way, in my time, there's only five university for Chinese Malaysian to get to University of Malaya is a big thing, okay? Anyway, I still remember taking my bike and it was drizzling. I was crying. I was crying because I was very hurt. I was crying because I was just a young Christian, a two-year-old Christian. And I still remember the song that I love in the church. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Somehow at a very young age, a very young Christian, I make a quality decision from that day onward. Come what may, even if I don't go to university, even if I were back on the street, I will decide to follow Jesus. I think that that incident carved a deep foundation in my Christian life and Christian walk with Jesus. I pray that this evening that you will make a quality decision to follow Jesus, no turning back, no matter what. No, no compromise, no turning back. Pay the price to follow Jesus. If you think that God is real, God is worthy of your worship, God is worthy of your service, and God is the center and everything of your life. Daniel was consistent. You must be consistent in your Christian life. In other words, Consistency is not intensity. Consistency is not sprint running. Consistency is marathon. How many of you run 100 meters? Nobody. Marathon? My son runs marathon. I don't know where he got it from. He swims triathlon. Anybody know triathlon? He's 26 years old. He is into these sports. Triathlon, swimming, cycling, running. He ran 42 kilometers non-stop. Why you did that? Why you suffer like that? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> the key to running marathon is consistency. That means you don't spring off. You're just on a consistent pace. If you want to finish the finish line, I think in order for us to finish our Christian life well, we must have a consistent walk with the Lord, a consistent Bible reading, consistent prayer, consistent giving, consistent witnessing, consistent serving. All right, what's the difference between consistency and intensity? Let me illustrate using people trying to lose weight. I'm not looking at anybody, all right? You're all young and thin and fat and short, whatever your size. But I know many people struggle to lose weight. They want to lose weight, but they struggle. Don't put up your hand. <laughs> but let me share with you a key that will help you to overcome and guarantee lose weight. You say, how do I know? I try on my spiritual son. I have a spiritual son from Sabah. He was uh, almost 100 kilo. I told him, if you go in that rain, 
you're going to encounter many problems. He is only about 32 years old. I said, if you continue this line of obesity and overweight, you're going to have heart problem, kidney problem, leg problem, extra, extra. Anyway, so I said, if you truly want to lose weight, there's one key word, consistency. I told him this. You have to cut down your lunch, no lunch, have a good breakfast. In between you are hungry, eat lots of fruits and salad. And take one main meal a day at 5 o'clock or evening whatever time after work. In between, drink lots of water and green tea. I told him this simple recipe. Somehow he believed me and he started. He says the first one, two months was a struggle. The stomach protests, at night cannot sleep. Good craving for food, for sugar. Addicted. Do you know you do not know how much addicted we are to food until you start fasting? Believe me. When you fast, you think of the laksa, the fried kwetia, or the hokkien mi, hokkien. Pasang Hokkien Mee, the best in Malaysia. You think I don't know? Anyway, by the way, I'm born in Klang. My hometown in Klang. I don't know how you would stay in Klang. <laughs> so come back to my story. It's the little consistency every day that makes the difference. You are consistent, you make it. Okay. Now, my method to my spiritual son was more intense, but try cutting down little by little. First, start with sugar. White sugar is the number one killer. White sugar is poison. White sugar will help you to put on weight very fast. White sugar is found in almost all the processed food that you can think of. In our homes, no can drink, no Coke, no Coca Cola. We only drink kangen water and pure juice that I make. Expensive quality. But you see, health is more important than wealth. If you have one million in the bank and you're on wheelchair, what for? I would use that one million and be a free bird, healthy, can go anywhere, do anything, especially for my case, serve God. I travel around the world. I've been to 60 countries by the grace of God. And we go for eight, nine countries a year. I just came back from Nepal four days ago, by the way. So you need to be fit and healthy to serve God. And that comes with consistency. Now, don't, don't look at me. I'm not a saint. I'm flesh and blood like you. I love ice cream. I love fruitcake. I love mooncake. <laughs> Very sweet, right? But the proverb says, put a throat, put a knife on your throat. Let me paraphrase. Some people dig their grave with fork and spoon. Sorry, with chopsticks. Are you there? So, now, I'm a doer, not just a hearer. If I hear something that is good, I will do it. So now, I used to take three in one, now I take two in one. I try to control, you know, I travel a lot. People give me good food. In the plane, there is always one cake. Sometimes it looks so empty. I don't touch. First time is hard, second time is hard, third time is easier and easier and easier. Let me explain. Are you listening? Are you enjoying? If you can catch something what I said tonight, I believe it will change your life. There's this man. He had two dogs, a black dog and a white dog. And every day he would bring to the city square. And people will back, he would make the two dogs fight. Sometimes the white dog will win, sometimes the black dog will win. And people will bet. And you will know how to predict exactly that day which dog will win and which dog will lose. One 12-year-old boy was watching that every day and he was very curious. 
how come uh, these owners know exactly when the black dog will win, when the white dog will win? So after the whole thing was over, he came to him and says, Sir, excuse me, can, can you just tell me how come you can predict every time? I'm watching you for many days. Every day you predict it correct one. How come you know one? Sometimes black, sometimes white. How come? He says, Sonny boy, it's very simple. If I want the black dog to win, I will feed the black dog and I will stuff the white dog. Got a message. You got to starve your flesh in order for your spirit man to grow. You got to starve your stomach so that you can lose weight. Diet plays the most important part of your well being. Exercise is second. To lose weight, 90% is diet, 10% is exercise. Or maybe I put it 80 20. What you eat is what you are. Don't fool around. You say, how do you know? I have pastor's friend in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s died. Not because it's time for them to go home, because of health issue, heart attack, something wrong. I lost a friend, a good friend. He was only 38 years old. Got a wife and three kids. Loves to eat. I mean, loves to eat. He's diabetic, 38 years old, always diabetic, loves to eat. There's a wound as big as this palm, not healed. Anointed man of God, can preach, can lead worship, have an international church in a foreign land, which I won't tell you. One day, he went to Philippines for mission. He loves to eat. It was birthday, he was eating Rose slept until 2 o'clock in the morning. He forgot his insulin. He had stroke. He died in the hospital in a foreign land. The church paid tons of money to bring him back. I know his wife and his three kids, Doremi and his poor wife. He's only 38 years old. Tell me, did he die because God took him home? Or did he die prematurely? He had another 30 years of awesome amazing ministry he died prematurely because he did not take care of his health case number two another personal friend in Penang, i can bring it to him and show it to him he loves to eat prawns he loves to eat generally but especially prawns just in case you don't know prawns have very high cholesterol it's unclean the bible food you know the levitical law is unclean no one is unclean because God knows it's not good for you. Do you know fat belongs to God? But fat is the best part. Chan Kui Tiao must have the luck. The luck, you know, I'm from Clan, my father is a butcher, I know. The luck, Hokkien me especially, right? Add luck some more. That's the best. Jesus, God says, fat belongs to God. Do you know when I eat chicken, I take off the skin, I buy kampung chicken, it's very expensive. I skin it, every fat I can find, I take it away. That's why I bleed. <laughs> you eat fat, you become fat. You eat lean, you become lean. You don't need to be a rocket scientist. Am I right? You don't need to be a rocket scientist. Somebody commented my dinner. You know what I had for dinner? Elder Am is my witness. You know what I had? One plate of salad, one plate of fruits and one small piece of fish. That was my lunch. Do you think it's healthy? Do you know I enjoy? Not that I suffer eating. I'm not a cow. But let me tell you something. A secret to great health. How many? You see, one heart operation is 100,000. You lie on the bed for six months. You can't cough. Oh, the, the, the wound spilled. You know what I thought? Anybody around? Surgery, don't put up your hand. <laughs> but why don't you spend that 100,000 buy healthy food, eat healthy, live healthy? Does it make sense? Okay, come back to this story. This pastor friend of mine loves to eat, especially prawns. One day I went with him for a mission trip to Vietnam. The church collected an offering for him. And after the mission trip, he took me to uh, this buffet restaurant, five-star buffet restaurant, I mean, spread of food. 
And I saw a tree of prawns. A tree of prawns, right? He finished the whole tree of prawns. I could not believe with my own eyes. <laughs> The whole tree of prawns. He loved prawns. I know he loved prawns. I didn't know he loved that much. How know there's always a limit? He came back to Penang. He had stroke, never recovered. Couldn't preach. And he blamed God. Why God didn't heal him? He said God didn't heal him. I can tell you stories after stories. Wisdom is to learn from somebody else's mistake somebody else see so you do not need to repeat the same mistake the same sin consistency in every area of our life okay i i open a window of my life to share with you that i i preach and i do what i preach very important every morning I get up between 3 to 4. I discipline myself to sleep at 9. Today's service ends at 10. I feel very sorry. But it's okay because it's not every day. Our schedule is we sleep about 9 plus minus. We get up 3 to 4. What do we do? At 5, we go for prayer walk. Me and my wife, 45 minutes, go for prayer walk. We say, why at 5? Ah, less traffic. No pollution. Anyway. We choose it because it's quiet, it's cool, it's nice. At 45 minutes of walk, we pray for all the prayer needs. We pray for our son, pray for all our spirit children. I pray for nation of Israel. We pray for Malaysia or whatever God puts upon our heart to pray. Okay? Then we come back, I'll have scripture reading. I have this audio in the screen, my, my, my TV screen. I put it on. Audio, Genesis to Revelation. Every day I hear the word of God consistently. Every day I've been doing it for 44 years from Genesis to Revelation. That's why when I preach, I don't even need to look at the scripture. I know what I'm talking. And I get a quote from you. Why? Because I'm a preacher? No, because I'm a Christian. You see, if you are a cook, you cook for people and you don't eat yourself, you'll die. Understand? I'm a spiritual cook. I also must eat the word of God at the same time. So why the word of God? I'll continue that uh, another session. So important consistency. How many Christians spend time with the word of God with prayer every day? All right, not finished. At 7.15, I drive to the waterfall. 15 minutes drive to the waterfall. I climb the waterfall. I go there for almost one and a half hours. I pray in tongues, I seek God, I walk, I sweat. By the way, I played badminton for 50 years. I just quit two years ago. Because of my eyesight. Anyway, why do I do that? Because that's my love, my walk, my consistency. And beside consistency, there's another word called discipline. You see, discipline is very important. Early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Now, why did God create the night to sleep, the day to work? If you break that routine, you're asking for trouble. A lot of young people sleep late, get up late. Sorry, they sleep too early, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. <coughs> Lack of sleep. Many people today, especially young people, lack of sleep. You are digging graveyard. You are digging problem of your health. Lack of sleep. You know why sleep is so good? It refreshes your body. It heals your part. It repairs whatever is wrong. That's why when you're sick, you're forced to sleep. So if you don't sleep yourself well and healthy, then I guarantee you, you'll fall sick and you have to sleep. Worse in the hospital. Nature as a way, God created this body very amazing. But the moment you abuse it, you're asking for trouble. But if you don't abuse it, you flow with God. Do you know God is a consistent God? How do I know? Every day, sunrise, sunset is the same. Every time the earth turns around, the sun is the same. One degree away, will be frozen. One degree nearer will be burned. How consistent God is, right? God is consistent in His Word. 
Yes, yes, no, no. If you follow consistency and discipline in love, I guarantee you, you will grow spiritually. You have experienced God in an amazing way as you seek God. Let me give you an example. What do you mean seeking God? And what do you mean you encounter God? One of the morning while I walk with my wife, my wife loves wild mushroom. How many of you have eaten wild mushroom? The one that grows in the garden, in the forest, wave your hand at me. How many of you know what is wild mushroom? How many of you don't know? Okay. And I'm not testing your intelligence. If you don't know, then I explain. If you know, then I don't need to explain, right? Simple as it. But I cannot assume everybody knows. True? Okay, because especially young generation, they don't know. My generation, we know what's wild mushroom. Something that grows after a heavy rain in the jungle, in the forest, in the garden. Anyway, my father-in-law has one acre of land in Kuala Lumpur. He has cows, mango tree, banana tree, one acre of land. My wife grew up where my mother-in-law know how to test poison mushroom and non-poison mushroom. So she grew up loving wild mushroom and know how to test. So one morning we went out for a walk. We have a Christmas tree outside and underneath that morning was plenty of wild mushrooms. Suddenly her eyes... <laughs> she says, Wow, wonderful. So after the walk, she was so excited. She took a big pail, collected all the mushroom, washed, test. At 12 o'clock, she came to me and said, Paul, don't you want to eat the mushroom? She did stir fry and soup. I look at her, I said, if you don't die, then I will eat. <laughs> I didn't realize I was so prophetic. At 3 o'clock, I receive a WhatsApp message. Isn't it amazing we communicate by WhatsApp? So, <laughs> so she was able to come to the room. So I went to our master bedroom. She seated on the throne, vomiting and diarrhea at the same time the last three hours. Vomiting and diarrhea at the same time. She sat there, I washed her, I put a mattress on the floor. By this time, she's an Indian, as you know, she looks like Chinese. Her body was cold. She could hardly speak. She said, call, 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 call an ambulance. <laughs> now, for my wife to say that, call an ambulance, that is very serious because she's a woman of faith. She's like, cat, she got nine lives. She could have died. <laughs> Many times, but she's still alive today. I would tell you, maybe she would like, tell you some of the stories. Really, she's like cat, and she loves cat, by the way. Maybe she's got cat spirit. She's got nine lives. She could have died many times, but she's still around. Anyway, this time was serious. Now, I'm thinking, call ambulance. It'll be one hour to my house. You know the traffic. And one hour to the hospital. I'm not sure she can make it. Anyway. Now she's lying down, her body is cold, she looks pale like Chinese. I said, just hold on, just hold on. This is what I did, very simple. I lift up both my hands and I said, Father, in Jesus' name, neutralize the poison in the body. Pray the second prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, send an angel to bring the healing balm, the healing oil on her. And I laid my hands and I pray in tongues. For about 35 minutes, she fell asleep. She fell asleep. I got up. I suddenly realized I also ate the mushroom. <laughs> After she left the kitchen, I went in the kitchen. You know the story of Adam and Eve? The same scene, Eve did in the garden was repeated in my house. I'm going to talk to Adam and Eve when I go to heaven. True story, I'm not exaggerating. She's standing, God is my witness. My wife is recording. Then suddenly I realized I also had, then I was, oh, you, jalat, bochi, go on, go on, go on. I'm going to vomit, I'm going to go die already. 
God, I was waiting, you know, for the signal. I was so disappointed, nothing happened. Do you know why? Because God loves me a little bit more. How do you know? Are you sure? I didn't drink any water. No, God loves me a little bit more. God punished my, my wife for disobedience. God loves me, I was innocent. <laughs> Alright, tomorrow, next session, she will defend herself. <laughs> okay, anyway. She had a heart attack. Her blood was, that was a few years ago, we were flying to Asia. We came down from the plane, she felt a sharp pain like a knife goes through. Anyway, she landed in the hospital. They could not even take her blood because it was so thick. You have to put, uh, what is that? What, 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 what they put in to thin, to thin the blood? That's pretty clever. Clever. And then she had block. She shut from hospital. She repented and she prayed and seek God. Say seek God. Her, her niece worked with KPJ Hospital. So her niece took her medical record re report and gave it to the, the heart surgeon, the heart specialist. When the heart specialist saw the hey, your auntie is a walking time bomb. She has to come in now. She has so many blocks and she can explode anytime. So she went in for the test. All clear. The heart surgeon, the heart specialist says, is this the same medical report before and after? No, God healed her. See, that is a blessing. The breakthrough, the experience when you walk with God, when you see God, He's the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. You see, it's very real. You, you don't need to seek, I mean, or how I would put it, you, do, you should not just seek God during crisis. You should seek God and have that relationship with Him. And then when you pray, God answer. You see, I believe at that point when I prayed for my wife, there was a gift of faith. I was cool as cucumber. I just had that, that special gift of faith to believe God for the miracle. If God did not heal her that day, today I'll be a widow. I don't know whether good or bad, but I would be a widow. But I think God knows I need her. So, you see, a lot of things I cannot do, she can, only she can do. Okay, anyway, are you tired? I think you're cold. It's so cold, right? <laughs> You want some more story? I think I think health doesn't interest you because you're healthy. Like right? money interests you. Ah. Do you believe God can bless you financially? I'm not a prosperity preacher. I preach from Genesis to Revelation, but I believe God provides. You see, when you seek God, you will experience Jehovah Shama. Who is Jehovah Shama? God's present. God's manifest presence. If you seek God, you experience Jehovah Jireh. What means Jehovah Jireh? God, your provider. If you seek God, you experience Jehovah Rapha. Who is Jehovah Rapha? God, your healer. You will save a lot of medical bills. Can I share with you one more testimony? True story. All my stories are true unless otherwise stated. Maybe I leave money to another day so you can sleep well tonight. Because there's an Indian prop that says when you talk about money, dead men will arise. I don't want you to die, I want you to sleep. Okay, true story, huh? What was I going to share? Should I? What was I going to share? Okay, never mind, praise the Lord. Okay, let me share something about finance. Do you know God can lead you to prosper? Do you know God can lead you to invest? Do you know God can speak to you about selling house and buying house? 
I know it doesn't sound right in the Christian world today, but this is what I experienced, and I will tell you. I told you I came back from Australia with less than 20 ringgit. When I got married to my wife in the year 1990, we married by faith. Do you understand what it means by married by faith? Got no money. I told you I will not ask my parents for any help, right? Her parents, her father had one acre of land, very rich, but no cash. Got cow, but no cash. A very complex. <laughs> a one acre of land is very rich. My father-in-law is a great man. He's a great man, a loving man, a godly man. All right, I love her very. I love him very much. Anyway, both of us don't have money for wedding. I wish I I wanted to marry a million heiress, but I married somebody full time like me. Isn't that wonderful? Anyway. We got no money, literally. We, we didn't have dinner, instead we had high tea. You know high tea? Can cost. <laughs> After we got married, we were renting two rooms. We were so rich, we were renting two rooms. Not even a house. Isn't that wonderful? Anybody rent house, rent room? Can I see your hand? Wow, Glenn very rich. <laughs> no, oh no. Okay, never mind. So after two years of renting, I said to my wife, hey, Kenola, I think we should buy a house. So we save up consistency, saving, plan, intentional. You must be consistent in your saving, consistent in your diet, consistent in your prayer, consistent in your word. I believe every person should save at least 20%. Every young person that is working or in business should save at least 20% every month, every income, every unbound that comes along your path. Save 20%. What for? And you need money, huh? Not every day is sunny day. Go to the end. You sluggard. Learn. Gather the food in summer because winter is coming. How many people died during lockdown financially? So happy we draw EPF. When you go 60, no money. Hello? Everybody says savings. Okay, I hear rich people, but, but just in case. Why do you save? Wow, I'm going so many places to explain the word consistency. Saving is so important because you can buy things by cash. You can buy a car by cash, house by cash, dogs by cash, computer by cash, iPhone by cash. Those who buy iPhone should repent because you do need to pay so much money. Anyway, and the story goes on. Consistency. Do you know I discovered, I'm a father, spiritual father to many pastors, many young people. Sadly, a lot of them have financial problems. Got zero savings. I can't believe you work for 20 years, 10 years, zero savings. Still renting. Save the minimum, the best investment, buy a house. So we bought a house for 94,000. In Street Gomba. I like the place, a small little house, 94,000. The last housing estate before you go to Genting Highlands. How many been to Genting Highlands? Oh, you gamble lah. No, no, no. You go there for holiday. So last housing estate to 94,000. I was very happy. It's all jungle surrounding. You open the window and I love to open the window every morning. I live up. My eyes to the hill from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven. And I, I love the green, I, I love nature. So we travel around the world, just me and my wife, and we go for two weeks, one week, 10 days, and we come back. So every morning I have this, you see, habit. We all have habit, good or bad. I repeat, we all have habit, good or bad. How is habit created? By consistency. You are consistent in doing something, it create a habit. How many of you brush your teeth in the morning? Can I? <laughs> Only half. <laughs> wow, don't come near me tomorrow morning. <laughs> and how many of you don't feel the, the pain or the 
I mean, it's just quite automatic. Why? Because you do it every day, you don't feel it, right? Apply to your prayer, to the word, to your saving, to every area of your life, being consistent. So, one day, I opened the window one morning and God spoke. Do you believe God speaks? How many believe God speaks? At least to me. I'm not sure about you, but I know God speaks. I heard His voice when I opened the window the day I saw the green. The voice says, when you see the road, the green clear and there's a red road, it's time to move. Exact words. I told my wife, I said, hey, I just said God spoke to me. When you see the red earth, or the, there's the green, uh, the, the jungle clear, uh, there's, there's red earth, there's road, it's time to move. I'm thinking two more years, five more years. I'm, I'm thinking in my mind. I know that was God's voice because I've heard God's voice many, many times. Do you believe God speaks? He does. Okay, anyway. So we went for a trip and we came back about 10 days later. I opened the next morning the window as we... <gasps> When we were away, the jungle was clear. There was a red path, red earth, just like the Lord said. So I told my wife, time to move. You know what we did? Put it for sale sign. I bought 94. Two years later, I sold it for 160. Wonderful, huh? I moved from Sri Gopa to Ravang, where I'm staying now. I bought a bungalow for 160. 230. Isn't that wonderful? With the 160, I bought a bungalow house, 230. Unbelievable at those days. You see, if those days, those people like me didn't buy the house today, they cannot really. One million and above. Now, that was 230. Isn't that wonderful? God didn't stop speaking, no. So we were very happy that this bungalow house, a single bungalow house. So we have our books, our tapes, our office, our house, and everything all jumbled up. One day, my wife said, hey, Maybe we should buy two CBD house. One for staying, one for ministry office. I said, wow, that's a good idea. Say, see God. Everybody say, see God. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So, now, there's two ways to waterfall. Remember, I told you I go to waterfall? I've been going there for more than 30 years. There's two ways from my house to go to waterfall. One is a broad way, which is a longer roof. One is a narrow way, which is zigzag. It's shorter, it's narrow, but it goes through squatters area. So normally, I'll take the broad way. So that morning before I left for waterfall, I was in the toilet. The Lord spoke. This week is going to be very exciting for you. It doesn't make sense because everything is very normal. This week is going to be very exciting. I'm going to close with this story, okay? Are you enjoying it? Real life story, real encounter with God, real God's voice. So I left as usual. Okay, I heard this week is going to be a very exciting week. I usually take the broad way. For some strange reason, I took the narrow way. I think it must be an angel that guided my hand, that steering wheel. Because Jesus is my steering wheel, not a spare tire. So somehow, for the strange reason, I turned to the narrow way. Remember I told you, last time I took the narrow way, it was all squatters. That morning when I took the narrow way, I was shocked. Because there was no more squatters, one big piece of land cleared. And there is a board that says 24 units of semi D. 34. 34. Not yet developed, just a plain land. Two semi D house. I took down the developer's address and I was so spiritual that day I didn't go to waterfall. I turned back. <laughs> I went home. I was so excited. I said, Please, come here, let's go to the office. So instead of going to waterfall that day, I went straight to the developer office before 8 o'clock we were there. So I said, I'm interested to buy two units of semi D. And there were three directors in the company 
the one director was there. So I talked to him. His name is Manjit Singh. Actually, his, his house is just walking distance, just a stone throw away from where we are staying now. Manjit Singh, he's a very rich man. He had many lands. His father had many lands. Anyway, sat down and talked. I said, you're just about to launch this project. He said, yes. I said, I'm going to buy two units of semi-D. And if you will give me 10% discount, I'm thinking, uh, tights, you know, because God said, uh, so, God developer give you 10% discount. Uh. Anyway, he says, he look at me like, who is this guy? He said, look, there are three directors in this company. If each one of us buy, we, we will only get 5% discount. If my staff buy, you only get 1% discount. I said, okay, fair enough. I'm not your staff, I'm not a director. How about 4%? Any businessman here? No businessman. Okay, I tell you a trade secret. I'm not a businessman, but I think like a businessman. Write this down. You don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate for. In life, in business, you never get what you deserve. You usually don't get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate for. Second secret, learn to ask. Free man, ask, huh? Ask. Ask for upgrade. One of these days, I get upgrade for economic class to business class. Ask, huh? You see, the front row, the first row, Malaysian airline, you have to pay one. Huh? The first row got a lot of room. Anybody know what I'm talking? So I don't want to pay. I take the second row. But I found the secret how to upgrade to the first row. I won't tell you. You want to come and see me. <laughs> Must charge fees. <laughs> so in life, you don't get what you negotiate for. You get you don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate. Second principle, learn to ask. Segan tanya sesat jalan. So these two seminary, so it's okay, 4%. He look at me, he says, I cannot decide, there's two more directors. I will call them and I will let you know. So I said to him, if you sell me two units with 4% discount, guarantee God will bless this project, everyone will be sold. Oh, I talk to him like, like man of God. Of course, this guy is a non-Christian, you know. This guy is a non-Christian. So I was negotiating, not what I deserve. That afternoon, I received a phone call. He said, you're on, come and sign the s &P. Now, this is not planned. This is not, this is just a spur of a moment we did one day. So brave. Why am I so brave? God spoke up. Right? So me and my wife, we went and signed by two. And we had the luxury of choosing the best two units with the biggest land area. I wanted a big garden. So we have one corner house and the one adjacent with a huge garden. The biggest land area of the whole entire project. You see, God was so specific, so strategic. I tell you why. That was like Tuesday. Friday, we're going out station for ministry. You see, we're only home usually Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we are out ministry somewhere, somewhere, someplace, or overseas, all right? So the Saturday morning, they're going to launch the project. I bought the two units on Thursday. Signed the SMP on Friday, we're going out for ministry. Do you know on Monday when we came back, I was told that all of them were sold. It was a very prime area, walking distance to KTM station, to market, to bank. And yet it is off town. It's, it's a very amazing, you should come to my house. Shama knows his day with me last night. It's, it's really amazing. You know, okay, now it's a deal. Where do you get the money? I told you we live by faith, right? I told you we're not related to Rosma and Najib, right? Okay, this is what happened. For the house, I took a loan. I took a bank loan. But the other house for ministry office, I said, Lord, I'm not going to take a back home. You will provide because you're Jehovah Jerry. And this is the ministry house for your ministry, right? Now, as I told you, the developer have not developed. It's two years, right? 
So when you sign the sale and purchase agreement, within two years, they have to complete. So every time they build 5%, they pay 5%. Build 10%, they build. You understand what I'm saying? It's not really. So that gives me the exercise of a faith project. I want to take it as a faith project to believe God. Is God real? Can God really provide or not? Now, I don't want you to sleep late tonight I, because I also don't want to sleep late. I bought the other unit cash all paid for without background. God to God be the glory. No church support, no individual support, God support. Give Jesus a wonderful time. Let's look at Hebrew 11 verse 6 as we close tonight. I hope you are blessed and encouraged to walk with God, to seek God, to put God first in your life. There is reward, there is premium, there is blessing that awaits you. God has something more. This is a prophecy for some of you tonight. God has something more for you. How many believe God has something more? Just lift your hand. You believe God has something more for you? Just lift your hand. God has something more for you. Amen? Now, without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that He is. Let's just pause for a moment. Every time you pray, you are exercising faith. Can you see God? Can you hear? But why do you pray? You can't see Him. Huh? How do you know He exists? Ah, that is faith. What is faith? Hebrew 11. 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Did you see God? No. So what do you do? By faith. I've been a Christian for 44 years. I've prayed hundreds and thousands of prayer that has been answered by faith. Have I had a personal encounter face to face? Just no. But I know He exists. I exercise faith every time I speak to Him. Every time I pray, He answers prayer. I experience His sweet presence. I experience His miracle. I experience His provision. I experience His healing. I experience breakthrough. I experience answered prayer. Can you tell me God doesn't exist? He does. Faith is the substance of things so forth, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 6. Now, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Listen carefully. God does not respond to needs. God responds to faith. Let me repeat. God does not respond to needs. God responds to faith. If God responds to needs, there will be poor people in India and Africa. A pastor called me. Want to borrow 1,500 ringgit. Was it a need? Big need. He didn't pay car installment for three months. The bank is going to take his car. Do you know car is not a luxury? Do you agree car is no longer luxury? I'm talking about basic transport. I'm not talking about Porsche, BMW. That's luxury. I'm talking about basic transport. He was desperate. He texted me. He said, Dad, can you help? I won't tell you the rest of the story. But God did not respond to needs. He responded to faith. Faith. So every time you pray, you are exercising faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. I told you, right? How many want to please God? I want to make God happy. Ah, exercise faith. Every time you pray, actually, you make God happy because you are exercising faith, right? You're talking to somebody you didn't see. You're believing in somebody you didn't see. That's faith, right? I can see you. That's not faith. But if I cannot see you and I talk to you, that's faith. So, and he is a Rewarder, underline the word diligently. That is consistency. Diligently, consistently seek Him. How many want God to reward you? I guarantee you, this has been my life for 44 years. He's the rewarder of that, that diligence seeking. And I want to encourage you if you choose to seek God from now until He comes, until you go home. I guarantee you, you will experience wonderful things in your life, in your family. I can sit down the next two hours, share with you. I'll continue tomorrow. Let's stand.